And now we will have Sister Roz Harrison bring emphasis on the 95th church anniversary. Everyone, please have a blessed day. Bishop Elliott, Dr. Sheila Elliott, everyone assembled. Antioch, we are preparing for April 28th, amen? amen. April 28th, 95 years we have been here. Amen, that's all I can get, all right. 95 years we are still in here. Still standing, still worshiping and giving God the praise, amen? Antioch has been on the move for 95 years, and on April 28th, we want you to come out, join us as we celebrate this church anniversary. We are going to have a wonderful time. We are going to have a dynamic preacher, Bishop Calvin Rice of the New Jerusalem Worship Center. He is a, ma a mighty man of God that will deliver a powerful word. Amen? Amen. Don't forget, we are asking each member for your $100 pledge and contribution we are going to be here in a grand celebration. So join us on April 28th. God bless. How many of you know that God deserves all the glory, the honor, and the praise this morning? You deserve the glory and the honor. We lift our hands in worship as we bless your holy name. You deserve the glory. And we bless your holy name. You deserve, you deserve the glory and the honor and the honor. We lift our hands, we and we praise and we praise your. You deserve, you deserve the glory. And the honor, and the honor, we lift our hands, we lift our hands, as we bless, let's do that one more time, you deserve, you deserve the glory, and the honor, come on, we lift our hands, we lift our hands, and as we bless, as we bless, one more time, you deserve, you deserve, and the honor, we lift our hands, we lift our hands, in. as we bless, as we bless, you are great, for you are, you do miracles. And there's no one else like you. Cause there's no one else. Cause there's no one else. You are. Come on, you do miracles. You do. And there's no one else. Oh. And there's no. lift those hands and join us in singing there's no one else there is no one else like 
everyone give the Lord a wave offering and say there's no one else and there's no one else like we searched all over but we still can't find there's no one there is no one Last time there's no one else, there is no one else like. Now if you don't believe there's anyone else like God, come on and put those hands together. Come on and give it to him. Come on and give it to him. Come on and give it to him. Come on, you searched all over, there's no one like him. Come on, there's no one like him. Come on, there's no one like him. Come on, there's no one can heal your body like he can. No one can love you like he can. No one can save you like he can. No one can deliver you like he can. Come on, no one can sanctify you like he can. No one can justify you like he can. Come on, no one can redeem you like he can. Come on, there's no one else like you, God. There's no one else like you, God. Come on, we searched all over. Come on, we searched all over. And there's no one else like you, God. Hallelujah. You remain standing for a moment. Stand up for God, that is. In my private studies, I began to rehearse something that I've always known was sometimes we can become a little numb in our understandings. Not that we don't understand, but there's so much going on. Our understandings can become dim. God's name, one of God's names is Yahweh. Jehovah. And that name was whispered. Yahweh. The, the vowels were silent, only the consonants. And it related to one of the Ten Commandments is Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Use it without calling on his name or mentioning his name like you use in any other word in the English language or without thought, without worship, without awe. And so Lord, the word Lord, often we say Lord God, but the word Lord speaks of his authority. He's Lord in our lives, is he not? Lord is not one of his names. It bespeaks one of his attributes. He is, he is master. He is Lord. He is the authority. And not only in our lives, but in the universe. He is the supreme and divine architect. So this morning before we take our seats, since you're, we are standing for him and in honor of him. Some of us entered the building, the sanctuary at different times. But now that we're all here, I wonder if we could just the mere merely mention, the mere mention of his name with holy awe, worship, and worthship. The word worship comes from the word Hebrew word worthship. How how worthy is he? What is his worth to you in your life? And so they whispered his name. So they never became casual about his name. Now, how many of you know that's power in his name? It's authority in his name. There's dunamis in his name, and there is exousia in his name. So before we take our seats as we worship together, and sometimes we can get what we need from God by just taking God seriously and earnestly and reverently and worshipfully and not run past him. 
Would you just tell your neighbor, be careful how you approach God. There's none like him. He's not one of the gods. He is the one and only true and living God. Give God some honor. Sister Deborah Coleman said in Sunday school, church school, she said his eyes are going to and fro. And so his eyes are on you. His eyes are on the sparrow. Give God worthy praise like you know he's watching you, observing you, and ready to answer your prayers based on how you approach him, how you reverence him, how you honor him, how you extol him. Come on, give God praise. Come on, call on his name. Whosoever calleth upon the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, God, we love you. We honor you. And we bless your name. Worthy is the Lamb. Hallelujah. Something's going to flow our way just for being in unity. God wants us to love one another as he have loved us. Turn to somebody on your left and right side and tell them, I got to love you. Hallelujah. 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 Good morning to the church. Don't don't take God for granted. I know sometimes we take each other for granted. We don't mean to, but sometimes we slip into that. Am I right? But don't take God for granted. Don't take God for granted. Amen. Psalm 90. Psalm 90. Verses 1 and 2. Reads, Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Amen. Amen. Um, also in this chapter, we should not delve into exegeting the entire chapter uh, or with an entire number of psalm. But also talks about um, um, days of our years, of our lives, only uh, three score and ten, which is 70 plus 10 or 80. And, um, and then it also talks in verse 12 about teach us to number our days um, so that we can use the rest of our days in doing your will. Amen. Um, I take for granted that we're going to be here forever but if you only have a short time left and for half of us in the building we have less days left than we've had can I get a witness in this house and um, tell your neighbor you ought to try to do something right for God in these last days amen Try 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 to please him how many can admit that you wasted a few days can I get a witness in this house? And, and God has given us grace to, to, to redeem the redeemed years so that the latter rain will be greater than the former. And if we seek his face appropriately, he can restore unto us the years that the locust and the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm have stolen from us. 
Can I get seven of you to help me say, I want my stuff back? Amen. Hey, man, I want my stuff. Stolen, stolen. And David said, Lord, shall I pursue that which has been taken? God said, pursue, and thou shalt surely recover. Amen. Can you give God praise for what he has in store? Amen. And then give God another praise for what he's willing to restore. Come on, your health. Come on. Why pray if you don't really want it? I said praise him like you want your health back. Your children back. Your family back. Your peace back. Your land back. Your money back. Come on, somebody. Your fire back. Somebody shall fire. I want back. I want it back. I want back what the devil stole. And some of you haven't moved yet, but some of you, you know why he didn't move? Because he stole your joy. Amen. He, he stole your joy. David said, Lord, uh, he said, Lord, I need you. I, I know my salvation is not gone, but restore unto me the joy of my What good is salvation if it ain't no joy in it? What good is coming to church if you don't like being at church? And if you don't like the people at the church and you don't like nobody asking you to praise God in the church. But oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. How many of you got the joy of your salvation? I know you say, I know you sealed to the day of redemption. But if you still got your joy, stand up and be counted. Because somebody in the house don't have the joy that they used to have. But somebody help me say this joy that I have. The world didn't give it. And the world can't take it unless I give it away. Hallelujah. 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 Why you need your joy? Don't sit down yet. Because the joy of the Lord. You lose your joy. You lose your strength. How many of you need more strength than here today? Well, if you want your joy, then make a joyful noise unto the Lord. So that you can serve the Lord with gladness. Make a joyful noise in the house. Look at your neighbors. I've been through enough hell and high water. But I ask the Lord, let me enjoy these days. Come on, look at your neighbors. I've done a lot of stuff for other people. But I want the Lord to let me enjoy the rest of my life. Because I intend to serve him for the rest of my life. Hallelujah. 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 You may be seated. Hashakara. Lord, you've been my dwelling place. In all generations. My great granddaddy served you. My granddaddy was a preacher and he served you. My daddy was a deacon and he served you. My mama served you. So you've been our dwelling place in all generations. Somebody help me say he was taking care of me when I didn't know he was. Hallelujah. 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 And at least a handful of you here know that he came to the hospital and checked on you when other folk couldn't get in past visiting hours. He came to check on you in the midnight hour. If you can acknowledge that today, I need you to stand up and just give him thanks for past favor. What he did for you that you didn't, you weren't even conscious sometimes. Come on, somebody, you're knocked out. Some of you had things in your arms and in your bodies, but he was right there. Hallelujah. If your mom and your daddy gone, just raise your hand in this house. 
Because you know what I'm talking about. When you don't have no mother to check on you, no father to check on you, the Lord says, when my mother and my father forsake me, then the Lord will retrieve me. He will lift me up. Somebody say, he lifts me up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If he lifted you up, you ought to speak up and tell the world of his goodness, of his mercy, and of his grace. Hallelujah. You may be seated. I want to talk to you for 12 minutes. I want to talk to you, and I'm going to try to go fast because if I go fast, I might not be quite as long. Amen. If I go slow, I, I, I get flooded with too much else to say. Because he feeds me. Amen. Multitude of revelation. Tell your neighbor, he talks to me. And I talk to him. Hallelujah. Lord, you've been, my, you've been our dwelling place. You've been our dwelling place. I, I don't, I don't, we, I know we sing the song, Come By Here, Lord. But I don't want him to just come by here. But I want, to, I, want him to, I want him to dwell. I want to dwell. I want to be. I, want to, I, I, I don't want to spend a day without him. Amen. Anybody here like me need him every minute? Amen. Every second? Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. You can be happy. And then the next minute somebody will come up to you and break your spirit if you're not careful. Amen. But the Lord will raise up a standard. Can I get a witness? Hallelujah. I want to talk to you about, I want to raise a question, and I want to make a statement. The question is, have you any mountains? Verse 2 says, before the mountains were brought forth. Before. You, you, you were there, and... and uh, before you formed the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting. And everlasting has no beginning and it has no end. Eternal life has no beginning and it has no end. Um, do you not know that the Lord knew you before you were born? Some has a hallelujah in his house. And uh, he knows what you're made of. And made out of because he created you. Let's say it in modern day terms that he wired me. And he DNA'd me. Uh, tell somebody I have my father's DNA. Amen. He shares some of his attributes with me. Amen. Have you any mountains? Since he has something to do with the mountains. The reason we mention Yahweh because one of the definitions of Yahweh is that he is in Hebrew uh, understanding and language uh, and faith. He is a mountain God. All throughout the Bible, you see God showing up on the mountain. Oh, y'all with me in this house. And uh, a mountain God. Uh, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. Uh, have you in the mountains? As we do a deep dive very quickly into this theology of the mountain, since he is a mountain God, Jehovah is a mountain God. Moses, if you want to talk to God, you got to go up in the mountain. Tell your neighbor, everybody can't go with you. Tell the rest of children of Israel, stay down at the bottom of the mountain. I'm going to tell Aaron he's in charge while I'm gone, but I'm, sh I'm not sure I can trust him because while I'm gone, he's going to take the gold that we left Egypt with 
and building a golden calf. And the people had a party and danced naked around the bottom of the mountain while Moses is at the top of the mountain getting oracles from God. Hallelujah. You got to be careful what you do with God's stuff and the stuff God gave you. Lord, you've been our dwelling place in all generations before the mountains were brought forth. You know, I see a lot of places about mountains as locations in the Bible. And I have some understanding now with a deeper dive of what each one of those mountains were about. Every mountain was not a mountain of blessing. Some mountains were mountains of curses. Amen. Amen. That's why he said, uh, if you have faith the size of grain, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can say to the yonder's mountain, be thou removed. Yes, Tell your neighbor, some mountains need to get out of your way. Ah. Uh, and the songwriter says, some mountains you got to learn how to tunnel through. And some mountains, you got to let the Lord guide you safely around. Yeah. But also, since we're using these prepositions, which have to do with place, some mountains, you got to get over. Yes, are y'all in this house? Yeah. Mountains are there for a purpose, and uh, mountains are part of God's creation. Uh, God has both the power of good and evil at his disposal. And God does not have to create evil because all he has to do is withdraw the right hand of fellowship and you can do nothing without him. Amen. Are y'all with me in this house? Um, if God did not have you in the hollow of, your, of his hand, you would be exposed without protection to all manner of evil. The reason you're still here and have survived and are making it as well as you are is because God has you in the hollow of his hand. Did y'all hear me? Somebody said, I'm in his hand. Then turn around and say, his hand is upon me. Uh, One more mountain. Is anybody in here uh, uh, just using your, your spiritual imagination of the theology of the mountain, the mountains that are things you got to get past, go through, go over, go around, and sometimes there are blessings in the mountains. Can you, can you agree with me that you've had some mountains in your life? Yeah. Amen. You've had some mountains. Mountains. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? Mountains. Somebody said mountains. I happen to have been raised in the Blue Ridge Mountains. Um. People travel from all over the country to the Blue Ridge Mountains at a certain time of the year just to see the foliage, the leaves turning brown, and the beauty of the mountains overlooking the valleys. I know Lynchburg, Virginia is called Hill City, Seven Hills. It's not named after lynching. Usually when I tell people where I'm from, they say that's where they lynch people. No, it was founded by Mary and John Lynch, Quakers who decided to build the city on the James River with the mountains on all sides. And so... This notion of the mountain, even in Psalm 90, before the mountains were formed, but when I check my resources, 
I don't see too much about mountain. Usually the expositors and the Matthew Henrys and the commentarians and the exegetes, they, they, they talk a little bit about the mountains, but the mountains are limited in terms of anything significant about the mountain. All we know that scripture teaches us that the mountains were formed. So we deduced then God created the heavens and the earth and the mountains God created for a purpose. Mountains serve a purpose. In Israeli history, as we look at wars and rumors of wars all over the world right now, I understand that Iran sent some missiles to Israel and 99% of them Israel intercepted. And so they're on the verge of war there. It sounds like we may be headed towards some end times. Wars and rumors of wars. So mountains gave God's people, the Israelites, a military advantage. Somebody said, head for the hills. The Indians used to tear the cowboys up because they would hide out in the mountains. The time a cowboy would come close, they'd shoot him with an arrow. Choo! I ain't know whether to like the cowboys or the Indians. Especially when my mama told me she was half Indian and her, my grandmama was Indian. So I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm conflicted. Well, the cowboys, I don't know. They didn't show too many black cowboys when I was growing up. Hello. But there were black cowboys that we're learning about. But they robbed us of our history, so they didn't talk about that. Somebody's a hallelujah in this house. The buffalo soldiers also. Um, so if they don't teach it in the schools, we got to teach it ourselves. This mountain it intrigues me this morning. This that second verse, the mountains, the mountains. And I started looking at the various mountains in the Bible and what their significance is. What happened on those mountains or in those mountains that God intended to speak to us in our handling of mountains in our lives. Have you any mountains? Are any of you in here today facing some medical mountains right now? Mountains. Songwriter said that seems impossible. <laughs> um, but I can't wait to the end of the message to tell you that God specializes. Yeah. And things that seem impossible. <laughs> and he can do what no, what no other God can do. Somebody say hallelujah in this house. So let's start with a few of these mountains. Uh, Noah landed the ark, or the ark was landed on a mountain. Arad, Mount Arad. Some churches are named after these mountains, and you have to be careful what you name things, places, people, and even churches, because names carry a prophecy and a spirit with it. Look at your names, don't let anybody call you anything. Because every time they call you, something that's out of your name or not what God has spoken over you is speaking a prophecy over you. Amen. Are y'all with me here? Amen. That's why God said, I'm not going to let anybody Amen. name my child Jesus. His name. I'm going to name him. I'm not going to let John name him. I'm not going to let my, uh, uh, Joseph name him. I'm not going to let his, his grandfather, Elizabeth, and nobody, or the priest. What was that priest that was silent for a while? Zechariah? I'm not going to let him name him. God said, I'm going to name him myself. 
And that's why sometimes in life, God had to change some people's names. Y'all do know that, don't you? Name change. Y'all, did y'all hear me? So God changed Abram's name to Abraham and Sariah's name to Sarah and, and uh, he changed uh, uh, Jacob's name to Israel and named Saul's name to Paul and he changed your name to, from Junebug <laughs> and Bobo. Aaron represents new beginnings. Someone said new beginnings. That's the significance of Aaron. When God bring you through a storm and, 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 and something that other folk died in. Y'all know that's what happened with who is, whose family? The eight people in the family. That was Noah's family. Come, y'all with me? Noah's family. Eight of them. The whole, the whole universe the whole was, was, was wiped out. Because they didn't heed or hear or adhere to the preaching of Reverend Dr. Noah, pastor of Flood Street Baptist Church. And they all died in the flood. Do, do you have a even, I tell you we take things for granted, do you have a glimpse of the fact that literally God, you have survived some stuff that other folk went through, some of the same stuff you went through, but you are still here? Help me tell somebody, don't take that for granted, please. And they, they took for granted the preaching of Noah. They turned them off. Just like some of you got your favorite preachers and some preachers you don't want to listen to. You just, you just, you just, you may not want to listen to me, but I really don't care. I, I really don't. I really don't. I don't know. I used to care about some stuff, but some stuff I don't care about no more. Because a charge to keep, I have. And a God to glorify. And he told Joshua, don't fear the faces of the people. Just say what I tell you to say. Aaron, a place of new beginnings. <laughs> Listen. Good God Almighty. I need at least 12 of you to stand up on my left and my right. Who is willing for God to give you a new beginning. That you're not too old to have a new beginning. Come on, somebody. I want to have a new beginning on how, how I spend my time and how I don't let people take advantage of me and use me and abuse me. Come on, somebody. I, I want a new beginning on how to take care of my health. And, and uh, y'all with me here? A new beginning on what's important and what my priorities are. So much to hallelujah. And every day that God wakes you up is a new beginning. A chance to clean up what you messed up and start all over again. I thank God for a new beginning. Every time he forgives you of your sins, that's a new beginning. Because if we're not forgiven, the wages of sin is... You, you, you may be seated. You may be seated. New beginning. New beginning. Thank God for new beginnings. Y'all think I'm talking about, about somebody who out in the world and did wrong. I'm talking about some believers new some new beginnings. Can I get a witness? Another chapter. Somebody say another chapter in my life. Hallelujah. And how many in this next chapter, you're not going to repeat some of the mistakes that you made in the last chapter. Come on, somebody. I learned some lessons. In my last chapter that I'm trying to benefit from as I move forward. Can I get a witness in this house? And uh, Moriah, Mount Moriah is a, is a place for each of us, a place of testing. Some of us are testing. That was where uh, Abraham took his son. What was his boy's name? Isaac. Y'all going to talk to me this morning? All right, y'all got your Bible, don't you? Yeah, Moriah was a place of testing in the book of Genesis. God tested. Uh, he didn't tempt Abraham. He tested Abraham. And he sh got Abraham passed that test by showing God his heart. God, I'm willing to go all the way. I'm willing to obey you. And my brothers and sisters, if you're willing to obey 
sometimes you won't have to do what you think you have to do because when God sees your heart, man looks on the outward appearance. But God looks at your heart. Even if you can't do right, if you want to do right, God, and if you're trying to do right, God's looking at your heart. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, at least I'm trying to do right. And that's what God looks for. I desire, Lord, I desire. I don't want you to be mad at me. I don't want, I want to please you, God. I want to do your will. Moriah is a place of testing. When he raised his knife to slay his own son, God stayed his hand. He said, I got a ram in the bush. Can I get a witness? And Abraham called that place Jehovah Jireh, my provider. God will provide himself a lamb. Y'all didn't hear that. Y'all didn't hear that. Uh, Y'all didn't hear that. I didn't say God will provide a lamb. God will provide himself. Y'all didn't hear that. God was in Christ. So when you say, behold the lamb of God. When you say Jesus is the lamb slain from the foundations of the world. God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. He's omnipresent. He came down and he was still there at the same time. Just like some of y'all in church this morning, but your mind's somewhere else. You're here, but you ain't here. You're wondering where you turned the stove off before you left. I ain't talking about you because you know you ain't cooking nothing. I'm talking about some other people. A third mountain is Gilead. Somebody said Gilead. Gilead. Mount Gilead. 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 It's a mountain of where disunity takes place. Somebody said disunity. Uh, Mount Gilead is a, uh, a place of division. And disunity and anger and grudge between brothers. That's where we hear this um, benediction we used to use in Sunday school until we found out better. May the Lord watch between me and thee while we're absent one from another. We used to dismiss Sunday school with that, but it was taken out of context. That was Esau and Jacob saying, one brother saying to the other, you better hope God watch you over you. Uh, much as you hurt me, you did me wrong. You sold, you sold me out. You got my breath right. You, you tricked me. You tricked me. You better hope God watches over you. If not, I'm going to get you, sucker. <laughs> now, before y'all laugh too much, just think about at least one time in your life you had a grudge against somebody and you try to figure out how you can get them back. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? I ain't talking down to you. I've been there too. That was BC. Before Christ. But y'all do know, don't y'all know that some folks still in the church, been in the church for a while, still carry grudges? Y'all help me tell somebody, God don't like that. God don't like that. I don't like that. First of all, my memory ain't that long. I, I can't even remember what I'm supposed to be mad with you about. I, I, I can't win. I can't win no argument because I can't remember. I don't want to remember. But it's also, uh, Mother Perkins, it's, 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 uh, God can use what? What is bad for somebody else and work it for your good. Watch this. It's also the place, I told you it's the place of division, but it's also the place where Gideon, uh, divided the troops. Those that lapped when they drank water, they lapped like dogs. As opposed to those who just put their head down and scooped up with their hand. 
He sent them back home. He said, you too sophisticated. You too pretty. You, you too stuck on yourself. You too proper. I can't use you. We can fight the enemy and you down here trying to be proper. But the one that lapped like a dog. See, a dog lapped and looked at the same time. And you put your hand close to that dog, that dog will snap at you. He sent them down. He reduced the crowd. Y'all know the story, don't you? But it's a, 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 it's a mount where division takes place, but it's also disunity. And, and sometimes, listen, watch this. I'm, I'm trying to bless you. I don't want to stay along with either one of these mountains. But look, sometimes God got his hand all up in people not liking you. God don't want certain people to like you because it won't be good for you for them to like you. Y'all didn't hear me then. I said, God can be in the midst of what you think is something terrible. Aren't you glad God didn't let you hang out with certain people but so long? Come on. Come on. Hello? They, they got mad at you and talking about they ain't speaking to you no more and they ain't going to deal with you no more. They think they, doing, they think they hurting you. They did you a favor. A favor. The eagle stirs the nest. God creates discomfort to get you to move to a better place. God will make frustration your best friend to get you to move to higher ground. Can I get a witness? Tell your neighbor, I'm tired of dealing with negative people. So God will let them make you upset, frustrated to get you to keep it moving. Y'all ain't hearing me over here. I need an amen over in this house. All right. Mount. Have you a mount? Mount Sierra. Sierra. Mount Sierra is a mount of opposition. Opposition. Esau and his descendants would not forgive Jacob and his descendants for Jacob inheriting Esau's birthright. Seer is a mount of unforgiveness. Sometimes it's between brothers and sisters. Am I right? You can have some people in your own family that that you you know. Can I get two more amens? I'm moving on because y'all act like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. And, 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 and sometimes it don't happen until, the, until something happened to mom and dad. I try to tell y'all this. And then, and then they ain't do nothing to help take care of mom and daddy. They ain't do nothing to help take care of the house. But now they want their share. Um, share them lazy. They want their share. Their share. The funeral expenses got to be paid, but they, don't, they, they, they hide then. And you kicking it all out, but now the house selling, they, they want my share. Yes, right. Y'all better listen to me. If it ain't happened to you, it's gonna happen. Oh no, me and my brother, no, me and my brother, me and my brother, we close. Me and my sister, we close, we close. Okay, wait. Okay, wait. If my family won't look in, I say something, but they looking. So I'm going back down here. Mount Horeb. Have you in the mountains? Horeb. Mount Horeb. Somebody said Mount Horeb. Mount Horeb is a peak. Some mountains have more than one peak. Like Pisgah is a high point, high peak. Like in the Blue Ridge Mountains where Carolyn and Melvin and I from down in Virginia, Blue Ridge Mountains, the high peak is the peak 
peaks of Ada. You go up in the mountain, you got to go way up to the peak. I was up there in peaks of Ada where my oldest son had a near drowning. Man, I was not supposed to make it on a church picnic. High peak. So some, some terrible things can happen in a high mountain. Um, horror. A couple of things happen in horror. Two things. Good, I tell you, all mountains, it's good and bad things. Horup is a place where fresh waters came from, fresh waters. But also Horup is the place where God stripped the priest of their, their ornaments. He stripped them because of sin. He stripped them, made them take their ornaments off. It happened a couple of times. Matter of fact, uh, Aaron, who is the father of the priesthood, the Aaronic priesthood, out of which his whole his whole sons and sons and sons and sons, his lineage were to be devoted and dedicated to the priesthood. God called Aaron up to Mount Horeb and, uh, and stripped him of his priestly garments. He was the high priest. And he stripped him. Good God, I'm because of what he had done. And because uh, he had negative reports. He, had, he was influenced by his sister Miriam who, who loved Moses, helped save him in the bulrush basket. But when God began to elevate Moses and she was older, she thought because God elevated him that she should still be over her or her, she should still be over him and she despised her brother whom she loved. It's a thin line. Between love and hate. Everybody love you until you get something that they think they should have. Or somebody that they think they should have. Y'all woke up then. Hallelujah. I know you can get them, but can you keep them? I know you can get her, but can you keep her? And I know y'all think it's cheaper to keep her, but let me go back to these mountains. Let me stay in the mountains. Let me head for the hills. He got stripped. He got stripped. He never made it, Mother Drayton, to the promised land because he was antithetical. He was a part of the criticism crowd. It was Joshua and Caleb who stuck closer than his own brother, Aaron, Moses' brother, sister, murmured against him, and she ended up with leprosy. You got to be careful how you treat a child of God. Tell your neighbor, I'm one of God's children. I know I am. I got to be careful how I treat you. And you got to be careful how you treat me. We got to be careful how we treat each other. Is that right? Sana! I got one more mouth. Sana! Sana claims a lot of attention in the book of Genesis. And so when Moses got the Ten Commandments, and I've been, listen, y'all, you need to go back and study the Ten Commandments sometime. Because we're getting away from it. In this country, in God we trust. You know, as a kid, we had to be able to recite the Ten Commandments. Most people don't even know it. Don't know. Hello? What are the Ten Commandments? Yeah, you, you go and watch that movie, Charlton Heston. That's what you would do. Ten Commandments. Are y'all here? Thou shalt love thy Lord, thy God. Is that right? Him only shall thou serve. Remember the Sabbath day and what? Honor your mother and father upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shall not kill. Thou shall not steal. Thou shall not commit adultery. Thou shall not covet thy neighbors. 
wife, ox, ass, maidservant, manservant. Yeah. Thou should not bear false witness. That means don't lie. Is that right? And thou shall not graven images. Come on. Bear, bear. Yeah. Worship the Lord thy God and him only. For I, the Lord thy God, am a what? Jealous God. Remember the Sabbath and to keep it holy. Six days. That's all in there. Don't just read the top part. Shalt thou work. And on the Sabbath, thou shalt rest and do no labor. Did y'all hear me? I don't care if it's overtime, double time. I can't skip over it. It's in the book. And let the Lord, let the, let, let the good Lord hit you. I know y'all want me to move on on that one. They want me to move on, per. They want me to move on. And God's the same today. So, so Sinai is, a, is the mount of instructions. How many of you want God's blessings? How many of you want to follow God's instructions? Because usually there are instructions that go with the blessings. But to want the blessing without following the instructions is manipulation. And, tell, and somebody help me tell somebody, you can't manipulate God. He knows your thoughts. He knows your thoughts. Moses said to God, after he experienced being in the presence of God, Dr. Thomas, he said, God, show me your glory. God didn't answer him. He responded to him, Brother Perry. He said, I'll show you my ways. And if you follow my ways, you will see my glory. But why won't you, you, would you want to see God's glory without being willing to follow his ways? Somebody help me say, teach me thy way, O Lord. Lord. For our ways are not your ways. But he is the way, the truth, and the life. Instruction. So Sinai is the mount of instruction. And how many of you in this, here today, as long as you've been in church, as much as you've been in the Bible, you still are teachable? How many of you are still teachable? How many of you are still teachable? There's um, Nebo, Mount Nebo, Pisgah, Pisgah, Mount Pisgah, high point in Nebo, the mount of vision where God would take, would take Moses, would take Martin King, if you will, if you, if you look at it figuratively, to the top of the mountain and show them the promised land. Show the spies the promised land. Look out mountain where I can see God's promises. I can see them, but I can't get to them with disobedience. Disobedience. I have a few more, but I'm going to cut across the field. I heard. Caleb said, Lord, give me this mountain. Lord, you've been faithful to me for these 45 years. I'm 85 now. I was 40 when you made some promises to me. And I'm older now, but Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm older. And while everybody's talking about I'm retiring, I want to tap out, and I want to do nothing. He said, Lord, give me this mountain. Would you please help me tell somebody that need to hear this? You need something to live for. 
Yeah, you need something to live for. You don't, you don't, you watch that language. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. You keep on telling God you're done. He going to let you be done. Well, somebody help me change it by saying, thy will, thy will be done. In my life. In my life. <sighs> Ephraim is the mount of rest. You remember when Mar- Mary and Martha was after Jesus about getting here, get here quick. Good, we, we, you've been eating dinner at our house and we've been cooking for you and we've been blessing you and all of that and washing your feet from the dirt off the sandals and you are our friends and we got a personal relationship with you and we called you and our brother is sick and you didn't come while he was sick and then he died and you still took four days after he died to get there so Lord, they were upset guess where he was? He was in the mountain Resting and praying. Huh. Listen, don't let nobody make you feel guilty because you got to rest yourself and you need some time to yourself. Don't let nobody make you feel guilty for that, about that. You, 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 that's a part of your health. Your immune system gets compromised when you get run down. And anything can jump on you. A bug can jump on you. And Elisha, if he was here to tell you, he would tell you a spirit of depression can jump on you. And loneliness and heaviness and feeling sorry for yourself and feeling stuck. A whole lot of stuff can jump on you. And don't, and don't let the devil see you down. He, he, when, the devil, when the devil see you down, that's when he really jump on you. You ever been going through something? And while you're going through something, then all of a sudden there's something else coming at you for you to go through while you're already going through something? And then while you're going through what's just coming at you, while you're going through something, something else is coming at you. Where you gonna run? I go to the rock. That is higher than I. Somebody say hallelujah. Jesus rested. Matter of fact, every time he performed those kind of mighty miracles, he could feel the virtue leaving his body. His natural body. Because the spirit is willing. But the flesh has limits. And so, to, to call forth the dead from the grave, his physical body had to be able to handle the power of the Holy Spirit. Running through his veins. So much a hallelujah in this house. You know, sometimes when you leave church, you tired. I'm tired sometimes before I leave. If I wasn't preaching, I'd be napping like one or two of you. There ain't no sleep like church sleep. <laughs> That's why y'all see me get up and stand up, help the preacher preach. I got to do something to stay awake. It used to be people used to be ashamed to go to sleep in church. People ain't ashamed no more. They just, they just cock right on back and just get it. They don't even care no more. Right, Mel? They don't even care no more. They don't even care no more. Yeah, yeah. And I don't bother them because the same thing happened to me. Right, Henry? Yes. All right. Give me this mouth. Climb the mountain. What you gonna do with your mountain? Tunnel through the mountain. Are you gonna speak to your mountain? Mountain, be removed. Uh, for God's sake. Uh, near, near, near my, near my will tell you. Y'all can't whisper. Y'all need to learn how to whisper. Y'all can't whisper. Because near my will tell you. I'm hearing you all the way up here. Yeah. Nehemiah will say, don't come down from the mountain. Mother Bell, right? Nehemiah said, you're doing a good work. You can't come down. Stay up there and finish your assignment. 
I'm, I'm coming in if y'all help me. Pull me on in. Holler at your boy, Fleet of Oregon, do something. Come down from the mountain. The law was given to Sinai, but uh, grace was given at Calvary. I, I told you about 12, 13, 14, 15 mountains, but I got one more mountain. Tell you, anybody got one more mountain? I can't conclude this message today without mentioning one more mountain. I, I know some great things happened at Sinai. The law was given at Sinai, but the law killeth. No one has been able to keep the law. Can I get a witness in this house? So we need one more mountain. Uh, Martin King said, I've been to the top of the mountain. Yes, say yes, yeah, somebody. Yeah. Well, somebody said, Reverend, what you talking about? You got one more mountain. Are you talking about Mount Transfiguration? Yeah. No, nah, but you're getting mighty, mighty close. Yeah. On Mount Transfiguration, Jesus showed up okay. with his disciple. Yeah. Three of his disciples. Somebody said, hallelujah. hallelujah. And... Uh, Moses and Elijah showed up to discuss with Jesus what death looks like. What it looked like going through death. Somebody said hallelujah. Ah, uh, but I'm not talking about Mount Transfiguration. Reverend, you didn't mention Mount Zion, the holy city of God in Jerusalem. Somebody said hallelujah. Ah, uh, the place where Jebus built. Can I get a witness? Uh, I, I see John says, I see a new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven. But there's one more mountain on my way to Calvary, y'all. And there was a mountain called Olivet. Say, yeah. After he prayed down in Gethsemane, he went up on Mount Olivet. Say, yeah. And got ready to keep his appointment with light against darkness, right against wrong. Hey, but well, there is a mountain. I see Jesus. Can't you see Jesus with a cross on his shoulder, making his way up a mount called Calvary? Somebody says Calvary's mountain. Yes, Lord. Ah, uh, when the cowboys and Indians uh, would get into a fight, uh, and, and when the Indians had the cowboys, uh, all of a sudden somebody would yell, "Had come to Calvary." Well, when we are lost in our sins, uh, I can tell you, "Had come Calvary." Jesus died on Calvary. Uh, it's a mountain. It's an ugly mountain. Is it a high mountain? Shaped like a skull. No grass grew on that mountain because the blood flowed down on the grass. Say yes. But on that mountain, he went up a little higher. The mountain was high enough to drag the cross. But they put him on the cross. Hung him on the cross. On a high mountain. Say yeah. Lift him high. Hang him wide for you and me. My Savior died. Ain't God all right? It was a high mountain, so high that the songwriter said his blood flows from the highest mountain down to the lowest valley. Say it. It reaches. Say it. Aren't you glad about it? He died on a mountain. But look at here. They also buried him in the mountain, in the cliff, in the tomb, between the rocks. Say yes. But hey, Sunday morning, my Jesus, Mary's baby, son of the living God. Yes, he got up. He got up with all power. Say yeah. Say yeah. Walked among us. For 
40 days going through closed doors. But on the last day 40, I saw his disciples said, did not our hearts burn as we spoke to him? By the way, somebody said, hallelujah. And then he got on a cloud, went higher than the mountain, went back to the heaven, sat down on the right hand of God and said, fire. I finished my course. I did what you told me to do. You got one more mountain. I got one more mountain. I got one more mountain. Tell your neighbor, I got one more prayer. Yeah. I got another praise. I got another prayer. I got another shout. And one of these days, I said, one of these days, he's coming back for us. I see it's coming back for us. And we're going to that new Jerusalem. Up above. The hemisphere. The stratosphere. Or the ionosphere. We're going up. Because God is a God who dwells up. Amen. You see that message today? You got some mountains. Some of those mountains you have experienced and some of those mountains you will experience. Some of the mountains are mountains of curses and some of the mountains are mountains of blessing. And what God has cursed, no man can bless. And what God has blessed, No man can curse. Give God praise if you know you're blessed in the sanctuary today. Hallelujah. And the devil can do you no harm. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Isn't God good? Isn't God good? Isn't God good? There is room at the cross for you yes there's room at the cross for you yes there is oh million help me out Perry millions have already come oh there's still room, room for one. Yes, there is room at the cross, cross for you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. There is room at the cross for you. You may be high, you may be low. Oh, yeah.
Can you hum it? Can you hum it while I extend the invitation? Will you hum it? The doors of the church are open and have been open ever since that wonderful end or event on Mount Calvary. He died for you and he died for me and his death has not been in vain in many of our lives, in the lives of every believer. He's real. He can get you over, around, or through any mountain that life places before you. And if you have faith in him, just the size of a mustard seed, you can say to the mountain, be thou removed, and it will vanish away. The greatest mount that you will ever experience is a mountain called sin. It's a mountain that can only be crossed with the help of the one who died on the mountain. His name is Jesus. And today the invitation is being extended to you. To give God a chance in your life. There are countless witnesses in the house that will tell you he can turn your life around. He can pick you up out of your valley, even of despondency, and place you on a mountain of hope and inspiration. I know he can do it because he did it for me. Why don't you give him a chance? To do it for you the door is open if you haven't been baptized it's an act of obedience to say I'm not ashamed to be identified with him to be buried with him of my transgressions my sins my past no matter how hideous it might be but he died a hideous death that you might live And there's still room. And there's time. If you're here today, harden not your heart. Don't wait. Procrastinate. Hesitate. And don't let it be said it was too late. Is there one? Why don't you come? My brother Perry sings one more oh, yeah. round of the song. Would you consider your ways? There is room. Yes. At the cross for you. Mm -hmm. There is my God. At the cross for you. Mm. Oh Lord, though millions, millions have come. Oh, that's room for one. Yeah! There is room. Thank you, Jesus. At the cross for you. Oh, yeah. There is room. Is there another? At the cross for you. Oh, there is still room 
Let's thank God for the two, or the individual has come. One recently united with the church and has gone back into the hedges and compelled somebody else to come. Come on, let's thank God for that multiplication. Oh, this is mom, mom and daughter. All right, you're a good fisherman, you're a good fisherman. Make you fishers of men, God bless you. Is that baptism, sir? Yeah, one. One for baptism, you've already been baptized, yes. Yeah, hallelujah. Stay right there. Give me two minutes for prayer. Bob, uh, Brian Lyle has asked that the church be, Reverend Brian Lyle, they're watching, and they've asked that the church would intercede for them as he has his challenges. And he's rejoicing that he's being fitted for his prosthesis, prosthetics. And also, we're going to be praying for Bo, Vobo, who's also going through. He's in good spirit. He's doing well. And we're going to pray for um, Natalie Sims and her father, the father of Natalie Sims and Floristine Smith, the mother of Tony Ebron. The power of intercession. We're praying for Joella Mitchell in the passing of her husband. We're praying for Joanne Madison in the passing of her brother, William Hunter. Arrangements to follow. We're praying for you. Praying for Bob Shaw. He's watching by Facebook. Miss Royal. She's on YouTube. Felicia Townsend. Cheryl Brown. And Mary Boyd. Dorothy Jones. Dora Reed. Annie. Betty Pulsey. Maddie Bettis. Mother Edith Lake. Eleanor Johnson. Maddie Williams, Ruth Robinson, 
Mary Wright, over over 100 years of age. Yeah. Wilbur Jones, who's now out of the rehab center and is at home, asked God give her, to give his wife strength. He's come a long ways. And he's home now. Lord Middleton. And this morning we're praying for Brother Jim Garner who's relocating to North Carolina and this is his last few days here in the New York. He's been a wonderful mayor. He's here this day and he wants to say a word to us after we would have prayed and thank us for our friendship and our unity. But let's lift Mayor Jim Garner up in our prayers today. That God will allow these days to be great days in his life. And he enjoys some of the fruits of his labor. He's helped many. He's been faithful. Now we would that God would be faithful to him. I'm praying for my young brother, Corey. He's been my prayer companion for a long time. His mother's here today, but we're praying for him that God will intercede on his behalf and make a way out of no way. Name by name and one by one. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray the prayer of faith. Huh? Book of James said if we have any sick among us to let them call for the elders of the church, anoint them with oil, lay on hands, pray the prayer of faith and they shall recover. So Lord, we're reaching out by faith to the countless that are depending upon the prayers of the church and we ask that the prayers of the church today will avail much as we pray sincerely and fervently we take your, your word. You said it would avail much. Thank you, Holy Father. We thank you for what is about to manifest by your Jehovistic hand and your Yahwistic power. Lay your hand on my brothers and my sisters, sons and daughters, in the name of Jesus bereft, grieving, sorrowing. Somebody feels like Job. As uh, soon as they get over one thing or before they can get over, something else has come to pass. So right now, God, comfort those that need your comfort. Strengthen those that need your strength. Strength like no other. In the name of Jesus. Touch brother Derek. You know what he's been through over the last few days? Touch him right now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for every mountain you brought us over. Every valley you brought us through. In the name of Jesus. Right now, touch mothers and grandmothers. Fathers and grandfathers. In the name of Jesus. Children and grandchildren. In the name of Jesus. Forgive those who are still ridden with guilt and shame. Sin had left a crimson stain. Well, thank you that you washed it white as snow. Forgive us. Forgive America in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Touch the homeless right now. On my way to church, I saw two police cars removing the homeless off some church steps.
make a way for the homeless. They don't want no more housing around here. Affordable. But touch politicians. Humble them. Let them know that everybody don't have a big house to live in like now. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. As Deacon Bell used to say, for that person that walked the streets all night long. Because they don't have a home to go to. Or home just ain't like home. Thank you for hearing our prayers. Bless our sons and daughters and relatives in distant states, different cities, different lands. Thank you. Lay your hand on our senior citizens. Those that are well in age. We love you. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Yeah! Yeah! There's room at the cross for you. Oh, there is room at the cross for you. Oh yeah There is room At the floor For you Hey The Million Have come That's still room for one, yeah, there is room at the cross. There is room at the cross. Put your hands together and give God praise. Give God praise. Please come. The tithe is mine, saith the Lord. How will a man say we robbed God? How when have we robbed him with our tithes and our offerings? <clears throat> Prove me now, herewith said the Lord of hosts, I will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive it. I will make you a delightsome land and I will make your name great 
and I will rebuke the devourer, everything that's choking your seed and blocking your, your prosperity. The tithe, proportionate giving, Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for those who have given of their tithes and offerings. We pray now that you will bless these gifts, that they will be used in the manner for which they were taken. All things come of thee.
again with a priority towards souls being won to Christ. Let's give God praise for the mother who's going to be baptized on the first Sunday. Amen. And now let us receive uh, Mayor Jim Gone. Let's give him a hand of appreciation before he even speaks to us. Let's tell him we love him. We thank him for his service. Mayor. Thank you, Bishop. First and foremost, giving honor to God to this great church, Antioch Baptist Church, who's been friend down through the years. Just as I came to you asking you for support when I first ran for mayor, yeah. actually when I first ran for trustee, and of course I ran for mayor. I'm coming back to say thank all of you yeah. for what you have done for me. I am officially a North Carolina citizen now, and I just came back just to collect all my goods, and I'm leaving behind one of the greatest prizes of my life, of course, is my daughter, Yolanda. She's the superintendent of Parks and Recreation here, where she grew up in Hempstead. Oh, yeah. But I want to publicly thank Ms. Shirley Joan Martin for being my first secretary. Shirley, would you please stand? Yeah. And of course, Bishop Elliott, I yes, can't sir. say enough about you and Mrs. Elliott. Thank yes, you so much yes, sir. for all the helps and act yes, of kindness that yes, you uh, gave me yes, each and every time I come and ask for support. Yes, I have the honor of being the first black mayor in the state of New York before Dinkins. Yeah. That, that could not have happened if you didn't do it for me. I had the privilege of naming that streak out there after... Uh, Reverend Burrell. Yeah. Reverend Burrell. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Reverend Jane Burrell. Yeah. I'm very proud of what I've done. And certainly with the help of Bishop Elliott, he and That's I have been friends for many, 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 many years. Yeah. And I just want to come back and just say thank each and every one of you uh, for what you have done for me. It's been a ride. I had a chance to see the world, not at taxpayers' expense. <laughs> but uh, I just want to come back and just say thank you. And of course, uh, that gentleman that was singing in the room at the cross of me, uh, one of my fraternity brothers, Brother Perry, where is he over there? I just see him over there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Alpha, so, Alpha Phi Alpha, yeah. That's correct. Yeah, that's First right, of yeah. all, servants of all, we shall transcend all. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I just want to come back and just say thank you. Uh, and I'll be actually moving out very soon. But I just want to go, I'm going around to all the churches that thank all the churches that helped me become first African-American mayor on Long Island and in the state of New York. And so I just want to say thank you. I try to do my best, you know. Um, I try to do my best, uh, what I can do. I leave it to the next generation. The next generation can do it. And I know they can do it. I've seen them do it, and they can do it. Yeah. Thank you for everything. All right. Jim, stay right there for a minute. Thank you. Let, let us stand. Uh, Deacons, will you come and join me? I, we want to pray for him as he transitions to the south, to North Carolina. Deacons, would you come and join me? And preachers, would you come, please? Lay your hand on him. Point your hand toward Mayor Garner. I'd like to preface the prayer by saying to you, that Antioch Citadel of Hope would never have been built without Mayor Jim Garner. Come on, give God praise for that. <laughs> Union, Union Baptist Church of Hempstead used Antioch's prototype, and they would not have their senior housing if it were not for the partnership of Mayor Jim Garner. Times Square, which became dilapidated and I saw would not have been restored to the shopping center that it has become if it had not been for Mayor Jim Garner. Amen. 
What's the name of that other store on him, sir? Turn back. Was it Macy's? What was the name of it over there? A and S Project, where banks and restaurants and businesses are now, would never have taken place. The Home Depot and all of that, the whole development, if it had not been for God's hand upon and the partnership that Jim Garner secured with churches and houses of faith. And when we went down there to get our zoning for the citadel and when we began to build here he told the other trustees y'all better treat the churches right you better treat the church right and two of them voted against us and next thing you know nobody heard anything about them since <laughs> he tried to warn them you know i'm telling the truth he tried to warn them he tried to warn them he pointed his finger and said y'all better leave the church alone and his success is by and large because he, he stayed close to the church Bishop Carr was his pastor at Jackson Memorial. Right. He succeeded Bishop Carr, but he always held fast to the church. Yes, we honor him for that. And, um, and so we wish him well as he moves off with his beautiful wife who's waiting for him in North Carolina. Amen. And we're going to cover, we're going to cover Yolanda. Yeah. Yes, Amen. we are. Amen. And because uh, you covered so many people. This mayor hired more African-Americans. Yeah who retired with dignity and some still working in the village of Hempstead than any other mayor. Please give God praise for that. James, James Burrell would have lost his job 14 times if it hadn't been for <laughs> mayor, mayor and myself intervening. He's that kind of mayor, and I say that of him. Amen? Amen. He's my friend, he's my partner, and he has shown himself to be that way. Yes, sir. That, all right. Father, we pray. Stretch forth your hand. Father, I pray that you would grant favor, transitional favor for our brother Jim Garner, who has been faithful and who has served the community and has made life better for many residents amid sometimes criticisms, amid not understanding what it takes to carry the burden of a whole entire community, the largest village in the United States of America. And I thank you for him being a trailblazer. Now, Lord, crown him with favor. Bless him and his family in their going out and their coming in. In the name of Jesus. Bless him in the health. In his health, oh God. And bless him in his favor, in his finances, oh God. And, and just give him well-being. We, we want to say thank you, Lord. What he did for the community came through him, but it came from you, God. So we thank you for using him as a, a human vessel. We thank you now. And now we bless you. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and grant you his shalom, peace. Can we all sing together? Amen, amen, amen. Bless you, Jim. Love you, brother. Let's stay in touch. Bless you, let's stay in touch. Let's stay in touch. Are they